Good evening to you and welcome to a special WFAA presentation. I'm Matt Howerton. Our anchors, our reporters, you know them. You see them on a daily basis. But this is television, baby. And it's not possible without the masters behind the compelling, the heartbreak, and often inspiring images that we bring to you every single day. They are our photojournalists, the people you never see, the faceless. But tonight, we turn the cameras around, baby, and we introduce you to the men and women at WFAA behind the lens. This is The Photographers. Tell them how many you see. I don't know, I don't know. It feels unreal. <laughs> This is like a lot more action than I was expecting. Oh, boom. Uh oh, oh. Everyone I can think of is posting it. I mean, right? What do you see? Mm -hmm. Is this what everybody else has been saying the whole time? How much fun have you guys been having on your snow day today? A lot. <laughs> Let's go, Rangers! God, that's cold. Put a smile on their faces. And every single bit of it was worse. They fought the battle together. Makes the world. If you care about photojournalism, you want to be at WFAA. There's no other place you want to be. No matter how hot it is. Come on, Wildcats. Texas, this is it. It is hard to see tomorrow. It was just smoke. There's a lot of black smoke. When today, Happens. I couldn't see anything past the smoke. A lot of shooting up flames. Most other stations, they're just worried about filling time, getting something on TV. Here we really prioritize how things look, how things feel. And at that point I'm thinking like, do I grab the important stuff? The important stuff is sitting right next to Joe Box. What is that right there? Normani, three years old. It's a fire. Is it fire? Yeah. Were you scared? Yeah. You were? What were you scared of? Fire? Yeah. Normani and the fire are reminders that life is precious. What is that? Look at this, it's a flash. Unbelievable. I'm hoping everybody all right though. I hope everybody made it out. I just hope all the animals got out. That did happen today. Everyone survived and no firefighters were hurt. The Red Cross will help these families pick up the pieces. Clothes and shoes and that can all be replaced. Tomorrow feels so far away. It's just um, where we gonna go today, you know. The craft and the storytelling. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> On a sunny Saturday afternoon. This is the world that we live in right now. It is not your normal station. It is, it is a, a big beast. I mean, just images I can't forget, you know? I believe with all my heart, each one of you that are here today are gonna make a change. They expect greatness, you know? And it, it's, you gotta want greatness, you know? It's not like, the station has a standard, but you also have to like put in the work to, you know, get to that level. I think here, I think they make smart editorial decisions. The reporting is smart. Everyone has so much talent in this building. As each name went up, <laughs> Someone broke down. That feels bad. <laughs> Some people pictured their kid's name on a cross. <laughs> like you don't know who else is next. <laughs> Some people knew a kid on a cross. That's one of my kids sitting up there. That's my student. I think when you're around people who are doing good stuff, you want to raise yourself, get to that level. Uh, ready. Thank you. Be safe, man. Yes, appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. thank you. You know, iron sharpens iron, and you want to keep pushing yourself to get better. Just everybody being all in on quality and, and great storytelling. That's basically what it boils down to. It's what set us apart all these years, all these decades. And I think people um, take pride in continuing that legacy, really. It's a legacy. September 11th would have been Noel Shoup's 105th birthday. It's all about creativity here, so if you if you have an idea, they want you to go for it and see what you can get out of it, you know? Yeah. Whatever idea we have, they just want us to try and see, see if we can make, make something great out of it. Here we go. Three. Please, please. 
Yay, give me it. I want to eat it now. It's Jake and Emerson's favorite part. Yeah, it's so good. It's not cookie cutter. I've never worked anywhere like this before. I've worked at some great stations, no doubt. This is, this is just another level. It's really surreal. Pretty awesome. And they fall in love with it. It just kind of grew from there. You know, ain't no days off. It's just real heart-wrenching to see. Oh, look at that. Three, two, one. Because I, I've used new stories as like art, you know? It was awesome. Thank it was you. incredible. <laughs> OK. But you just have to, you know, be there. We are just like you, except this is our job. Even the, the daily pieces, the daily news, there, there's still a sense of freedom because we, we really care about quality. Just about everybody around was getting their water hoses, spraying their houses. Finding a different angle, a different perspective, but maybe more importantly, trying our best to find a character. If Don't Mess With Texas was a person. I don't go by Kelly, I don't go by Rhonda, and I don't go by Nikki. I go by Elaine White, and that's my name at birth. And this is Elaine's home in Plano. I'm done. I am up to here. And she will fight to keep it that way. I love visitors, but I don't like these visitors. It started in August of last year. A revolving door of men pull up and walk up to her front door. I mean, I've got them all shapes, sizes, ages, colors, creeds. They're all here. They're all looking for someone and something she's not. What can I do for you? He says, Oh, uh, supposed to meet someone here. And I said, To see who? He said, Uh, Rhonda. And I said, Is this for drugs or sex? Um, second one. We've learned now more than two dozen men have answered an ad for sex, paid up front, and were given Elaine's address. Police say it is a scam. We just need to try to figure out like which websites that information is being posted on. One, two, three. It got so bad she put signs out. Four, five, six, seven, eight. It's clear Elaine is a straight shooter. Kelly does not live here. Bold red spray paint. Plano police has responded a number of times to her home. This is my gun, Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum, four inch barrel. It is loaded and I will use it the next time they come here. She takes her gun with her from room to room. They say you can go to a bar and get it. Go there or stay home and get it from your wife. The first few months, she'd close the curtains and hide. She's done doing that. Stranger danger, you know, but I'm OK. I'm strong. I can do anything I want to do. This may all be a scam, but we can agree. Elaine is not. In Plano, I'm Jobin Punny. Yeah, like everywhere. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man, having fun. <laughs> That's a big cricket. If possible, we do our best to, you know, be that fly on the wall and just tell that story from a distance, from, from our perspective. If you find somebody that is there that can help you tell the story through their eyes and give you a different perspective, I think that goes a long way. In this kitchen. Hi. When it's go time. We have three left of that. The hustle never stops. Have you tried this yet? Weekend mornings, Chef Reina Duong and her team sling endless cups of coffee. For years and years, I'm like, why isn't there like a Vietnamese cafe shop in Dallas? She recently opened Chim Lan, the first Vietnamese coffee shop in Dallas. And on top of the coffee. I wanted to bring in other Vietnamese businesses, certain favorites that I have. Chef Duong handpicks local pastries to serve. This is going to be to go. Then 
at noon. Okay, so let's get the nam in. The cafe transforms into her bread and butter. Come on. Her restaurant called Excellent Sandwich Hat. This is going to be for Marion. Orders for banh mi sandwiches are already placed before they open. It's a sandwich, right? The only difference is the ingredients are different. We have grilled pork. We have our famous house pork sausage. And it's famous in Dallas, but nationally too. <sighs> Chef Duong is a finalist. Oh, God. Not to have a good lunch. For the 2023 James right, Beard Awards for Best Listen. Chef Texas. As a semifinalist for James Beard, it was such like a an emotional moment. And then when I got the finalist, I was like, wow, okay, this is great. It's emotional because it's of like how much she cares for every customer, every employee, every ingredient, even every leaf. How we wash and prep the cilantro, we don't hack at it. Everything is actually like hand plucked and picked. For the last bite will be just as good as the first, if not better. It's Wyatt Sandwich had. I have a no modifications policy. I have a no Policy. Chef Duong is unapologetically loud and proud of the culture she shares. Doing so much more than cooking good food is creating a space where everybody feels safe when they're here and they want to come here because it is a celebration of who we are as a people. For her love of people, when it's go time, you send out? the hustle never stops. In Dallas, I'm Tiffany Lee. The Texas Rangers played their very first game in Arlington in 1972. WFAA has been there to cover every single season, every spring training, all the long summers in Arlington, every single ah small taste, small taste of victory that we've seen along the way. But this season, this year, it was different. For the very first time, historically, the Rangers are the World Series champions in 2023, and we were there to cover it all. Man, the most challenging part and disgusting part for photojournalists, especially the, for myself and my colleagues, they celebrate champagne celebrations after each round that they win. Four champagne celebrations, yes. <laughs> when you're in there, basically, you, you want to let the moment happen. I want my, for me, I wanted to capture a lot of the celebration initially. And then you kind of start grabbing guys, trying to get their reaction. And I'm just so proud of these guys. Their obvious reaction to, to having won a, uh, the title. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, grown men crying, it's, it's, it's a moment. It's a moment. And, and there are athletes, no matter what sport they play, that never see a championship. So to have an opportunity, opportunity to cash in on a championship and get that ring and say that, man, we were the best. That year, we were the best. That means a lot to those guys. Hey, everybody. I know it's kind of a rough ride right now at 10. But it is, it is nuts right now in Globe Life Field. I, I was at Globe Life for the watch party, but the fans were still going crazy. Uh, we were there all night, people screaming in our faces. It was a long night, but it was cool to be a part of that, be able to see that. As a sports fanatic, surreal. I mean, it's, I've never experienced a World Series before. And being there for work, covering this underdog team that won, it's unbelievable. Do not be afraid to show off your dance moves, let's go! I was thinking about, we're lucky to be in this business, to have fun like that on the job. Yeah. Fans out here at Texas Live and, you know, getting their experience, but then also like through the lens as I'm looking through it, like, you know, I've just got this huge grin as I'm like recording these moments of like, you know, Rangers fan history and, and Rangers history that, and I'm like trying not to like jump as I'm holding the camera just cause it's, you know, you're excited just like everybody else. And, but at the same time, you still gotta do your job. 
We were behind the fence. We had one crew in the parade route. We were behind the fence. I'm telling you, there was this hill. It was hard to walk. I'm thinking this damn hill. Rangers had to, had to climb a hill, sort of, in their, in their season. Kind of an uphill battle. Sort of like what we're dealing with now. That was the theme, uphill battle. We got here at nine o'clock. Hell yeah. Yeah, the parade's gonna go that way. This is an insane crowd for sure. You never know how many people are gonna be here. They knew what it took to get here. I'm huge Ranger fan. <laughs> Let's go Rangers! They'll cut across there. They just had to find their way back. We came prepared, we came prepared. Their Texas Rangers had an uphill climb. A lot of the players were new and young and would need a lot of things to go right and a lot more things to forget. Yeah. Like the 2011 World Series. That was tough. We've been through some disappointing times. The year they almost got there. Hopefully they see us, hopefully they see us and they throw a ball at us or something. Yep, yep. Three childhood friends and diehard Ranger fans, Josh, Michael, and Jared. We got the ladder, no one else got it. Just might be the smartest ones here. How's it looking? He's like, you got a ladder, I got a truck. He's like, let's make it happen. No way they're missing this. That's a great view. Like their Rangers, they came from the bottom. We've been up a couple hills just to get here. Climbed every rung to win the World Series, their first. Let's go Rangers! Somebody coming up. For many here, Friday's parade has Arlington feeling like the center of the world. Just for today at least. <laughs> this is like DFW all at once. And for just a moment, all the past hurt was worth it. I'll lose feeling in my legs for this. When you've come this far, Ainsley figured she'd go just a little bit further. It was a climb, an uphill climb. 2023, we're at the top of the hill now. All this talk about journey and destination. But the view is now great. Why not have both? You know, for decades, WFAA has brought some of the most important and historic moments in North Texas into your living room. The JFK assassination, Shuttle Columbia, the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco. Photogs were there years ago covering those momentous pieces of history. And even decades later, there are still stories to tell. Is this all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the chief cameraman and assistant news director of WFA television. This is Bert Ship. Bert, we have brought the people pretty much up to date. Uh, would you tell them exactly what you know as of this point? Well, Jay, I was standing at the uh, trademark waiting his arrival there. Walking in this building, it, it's, it's kind of remarkable how, you know, this station has been around for so long. You know, you kind of just want to be, you know, a part, of, a part of its history, in a way. WFA-TV in Dallas, Texas. May I have your name, please, sir? My name is Abraham Zaputo. To cover it in that same, that same effort, I think, is important because it reminds people how important that event actually was at the time and why we should remember it. Cliff had just arrived in Dallas. I took two photos of there were two cars. He took these photos along the presidential parade route. About 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing. Minutes before the shooting. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassins' bullets in downtown Dallas. It's not a good memory of Dallas. When three shots suddenly rang out. It's a poignant moment. One witnessed his last speech. At the place of the artist. The most majestic of Kennedy's career. The other, his last living moments. Of the United States and his wife. I don't remember crying. Although it's, you know, could cry about it now. I, I love doing those those history stories, you know, because I, I I enjoy getting all that file video, that old grainy file video, and and doing something creative with it. And, and mixing it with, with the video that I shot that in the present day, you know? Oh yeah, uh, I've never forgot it. 
But then we began to see this. It was a Saturday morning. Space Shuttle Columbia was on its descent to Florida. Our binoculars were immediately on target. Campbell Cox was having his morning coffee. We are seven miles east of Nacogdoches. All eyes fixed on the shuttle, a single contrail, until... Something's not right. There you see what appears to be multiple pieces. 39 miles over East Texas. Traveling at 12,000 miles an hour. The shuttle broke apart. Probably just stuff coming off the thermal tiles, I told my daughter. And then it became a roaring sound. Prolonged sound with an echo. That gradually increased in loudness. Edward spent a lifetime searching for stars. In this moment, we stood in silence. With his daughter, my eyes had not lied. He was searching no, was for words. Uh, we realized at that moment, we just saw seven people die. When we do these stories, we, we, we want to do the best stories in the market for all these, these history stories that we do. And because this, we're the history-making station, so we, we want to keep it that way. Welcome back to The Photographers, a WFAA special presentation. You know, there's only so much time to go around in TV news. It's precious. And sometimes we can't let stories breathe, but other times, the special ones. We do try to give them all of the effort that we have, all of the time that we have, and it allows our photographers to show off their skills. Sandy, how are you? Great to see you. But with these long form pieces, you can deep dive into all this information that you typically don't have time for. A, a crew might get a six minute story, has to be good, has to flow. Like who else does that? I, I heard eight minute pieces can air here if it's good. I'm Mike Robinson. Event Carter. This station definitely provides, gives you the opportunity to not only, you know, shoot the story, but also have enough time to put together the story. and. You don't see too many station, other stations that do that, so it's what I like about you know working here at WFA. It just gives me a really big sense of fulfillment that I'm doing something more. Every couple of weeks, secured over her shoulders and carried carefully on her back. I tell him he's going to work and he gets super excited. Sarah Dutton delivers a dose of highly effective medicine. I'm going to put this on your lap because Harry likes to lay on the... Hi, Harry. Cuddly medicine. I love his little nose. Harry. He's so cute. Is a therapy cat. The friendliest cat I have. He works his magic. There you go. At Scottish Rite for Children in Dallas. Bet you weren't expecting to see a cat here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this hospital is world renowned for pediatric orthopedic care. It's like just calming to have a cat on you, always. Parker had reconstructive leg surgery. You wanna sit down? Kyla, 12 hour spine surgery. Very so sweet. Like a lot of Scottish Rite patients, Kyla has limb differences. Can you sit? And so does Harry. Good boy, Harry. Sarah's husband what? found him curled up in a ball in the middle of a road. What the heck's happening? He'd been run over. What's happening? A leg and shoulder had to be amputated. You want to pet him? Yeah, go for it. He's very comfortable. He is. But once Harry Always. healed. Wait, right, you've been some places. Sarah recognized a potential. <laughs> to heal others. I felt like he could probably touch some people, show people that you can get hurt and be disabled. So Perry And just be totally fine, live a normal life. Harry's a working man. He's earning that paycheck, right, Harry? You know, sometimes I go home to my cat and I'm like, why can't you be like Harry? Even kids who aren't cat people, you know, he really kind of changes people's perspectives on cats, which is really cool to see. It feels weird. I've only seen dogs in a hospital. Next to a cat-loving Virginia Chappelle. So? is Kalia Brownlee. This is my biggest fear. Getting infusions for lupus in Scottish Rite's rheumatology clinic does not scare Kalia. So big. Cats do. She runs. We both run. <laughs> but watching Harry. It makes me feel better. Calm a fellow patient. Hi. Gave Kalia courage. Hi. Are you ready? No. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pet him first? Mm-hmm. Oh. You can pet him first. Oh. 
No, she can't. Oh. oh, it's okay. You okay, Mama? I'm scared. You want to just pet his tail? Soon, yeah. petting Harry. Did you see that Harry has three legs? No. See, he's missing one right there. Oh, no. Turned into holding him. I got this. You got okay. this. Okay. Okay. I got you got it. You got it. And holding him. See? Oh. He knows you're scared. He's gonna be gentle. Turned into loving him. He's so pretty. It's like a blanket, huh? Uh huh. I thought I was gonna be scared, but now I'm not scared of cats anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should get one more. <laughs> Harry might not be the kind of medicine doctors prescribe. Oh, good boy. But he connects. I feel like he understands a lot of people's emotions and what they need. Look, it has an IV just like me. And a connection. I'm proud of her because she overcome her fear. Is its own kind of cure. I think I want to meet Harry more. In Dallas. I think he likes me. I think he likes you too. I'm Teresa Woodard. Built in 1956 and still operational. Going into that one, we thought it was going to be a day turn. You know, we thought we were going to just shoot this interview and uh, shoot some shots of the hotel and then call it a day. But then once we got out there and we uh, met this woman, Lindsay, and heard her story, uh, Joe and I both knew that it could be something more than that. It took weeks to shoot it all, but it was just little bits here and there, and we knew all along that it was gonna come together nicely. Who cares about an old chair? I love furniture. I mean, I just do. Lindsay Sherritt loves a project because she sees what most can't. This is one of a kind. And will do what most won't. Dive, yes. This is, yeah, all the way in. Just miles from her home and several feet above her head. There's a ladder. <laughs> in a large dumpster, Lindsay found the chair worth saving. It's cool, it's vintage. It still has a place and a purpose. But this story is not just about what she found, but where she found it. This highway, we can hardly speak it so loud. The Como Motel was a fixture off the once two-lane US 75. It's the first motel in Richardson, and it's the last motel. A place so iconic, the Robinsons have a drink named after it. That's good. That tastes like a, that tastes like a classic hotel. <laughs> built in 1956 and still operational. A mid-century modern that has seen enough layers of paint. Totally different color under here. It's holding on, but just barely. This is gonna be gross. Humidity did this. Let's go with that. Its history is messy. Captain Sully Sullenberger stayed here as a boy. Candy Montgomery and Alan Gore had their infamous affair here. I've been hearing rumbles about this for probably the last year and a half. But its biggest story is happening right now. The Como is up for sale and may soon be demolished. Mm -hmm. A few Richardson residents have something to say about that beyond what the marquee reads. What does it read? I feel like I'm saying it. I feel like all the people that have signed the petition are saying it. The Save the Como petition has nearly 5,000 signatures. They want it either refurbished or designated a historic landmark. Just hope. I just have hope that it can be saved. Preservation and heritage are, you know, they're economic drivers for a city. An agent for the owners isn't saying much, only that, quote, it is under contract and we're moving forward. Okay. Lindsay still remembers the day a church bought her great grandmother's home and turned it into a parking lot. She'd hate to see that. I don't even know where exactly it's gonna go. But that's never stopped me from picking up a chair. <laughs> For Lindsay, the chair matters. It's more than that, it's what the chair represents. Because the Como Motel matters. The last of a dying breed 
of roadside motels. Nothing is too late. Um, no deal is done until it's closed. So we'll ask again, who cares about an old chair? I do. The people who think a piece of history is worth saving. There's only one Como. In Richardson. It isn't trash. I'm Jobin Poniker. The bronze statues are a tribute to the celebration of flight. It's happening. It's exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. Celebration is what two sisters were in search of at DFW Airport. Grandma would be saying, thank you, Jesus. Sandra Hammonds and Brenda Bommert's grandmother, who died never knowing, what happened to her son? First Lieutenant Noel Shoup, a 25-year-old from Dublin, Texas, his B-17 shot down over France, declared missing and dead 79 years ago. We knew about him because our grandmother talked about him all the time. I know my grandmother. I know she prayed, dear God, bring my boy home. Now here's God, 79 years later, he's answering her prayer. He is bringing her boy home. And on that 108 degree day on the tarmac at DFW Airport. This is a real good one because he's finally coming home. Noel Shoup did come home. Welcome home, Noel. Two nieces celebrating meeting him for the very first time. Just put hand over your heart. Even though they knew the meeting would be like this. Welcome home, Uncle. home, Grandma. It's a really refreshing thing to see. It is. That there are this many people that care this much. And I'm so thankful that he gets that honor because he deserves it. But the long overdue honors were just beginning. September 11th would have been Noel Shoup's 105th birthday. A good day his family decided to bring their hero home. Thank you for your presence here today. Noel Shoup was found in just the last few years because the crash site was searched again. And in addition to DNA, a gold ring was pulled from the French countryside, Dublin High School, 1936, with Noel Shoup's initials engraved inside. You know what? He's home today. Amen? He is. as the hearse carried Noel Shoup to a grave near his parents at Upper Greens Creek Cemetery. Final resting place, Noel. That gold ring was on a gold chain. Phenomenal. That his niece now wears around her neck. Yea, May thou walk, walk through the, the valley in the shadow of death. death. I, I will fear no evil. The family of Noel Shoup, they know that a cemetery isn't a normal spot for a celebration. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. But that's exactly what they wanted this to be. Because from World War II alone, more than 72,000 families of the missing nation. are still waiting. Please take this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones. For a celebration like this. Honorable and faithful service. Thank you. And to their grandmother buried just a few feet away, Brenda wanted to say one more thing. Your son is finally home, Grandma. God has answered your prayer. What else can you say? What else other than welcome home? Finally, finally home. In Dublin, Texas, I'm Kevin Reed. Every year, the National Press Photographers Association hands out the Ernie Crisp Photojournalist of the Year Award. It is widely recognized in TV news as the highest individual honor a TV photographer can receive. And this year, one of our own took home that award, WFAA's Brandon Mowry. And it's not the first time he's done it, it's the second. <laughs> Power went out at Raymond Jaime's apartment, the middle brother they called Cheeto. I'm freezing. That God would heal their little hearts. This year I just kind of just did my thing and just worked. 
because I, it, it just happened. I just worked for a year and it happened. Just part of who we are, actually. I was scared. Down block, you want to hit the outside edge. It never occurred to me to ever break up with my art. You know what I mean? The mural piece that I did with Jobin was really probably, it's up in the top. It might be the best, the story I'm most proud of in my career, just because I worked so much on it, on it and I had like this vision to, to create this time lapse of the painting. The lines drawn early in history. This was a separated community and it was divided by the train tracks. Have left a mark. This area has a lot of history. On people. They're just indicators and the white is a sketch. This is the east side of McKinney. And places. The silo sits at the entrance to the east side. People don't pay attention to the detail. The push-pull relationship of layers. But if physical and figurative lines can divide, they can also connect. Everybody's talking about it. He wrestles with it, that ultimately he's judged by, by everybody. Guido Van Helten. I tell them I got a very strange job. Has an impossible job. An Australian artist who's charged with redrawing the lines. I'm very particular about colors and shapes. They are enormous canvases to work on. The old concrete grain silos, a towering vestige of the past, but more importantly to the people here, an entrance to McKinney's east side. There's a whole community here and, and there's depth to it. Historically home to black and brown families. You can mix skin tones from just two colors and blue. He looked at the community that we are. The first time I was wondering, is they gonna put some color to it? Guido spent months just learning. I always kind of feel like it's the second home, this space. Documenting, uh, finding. As many seats. McKinney. You know, so. <laughs> the artist is amazing. To me, it feels like it's the first day at school and I don't know anyone. And no one knew him. He took hundreds of photos around town to find one. This was a moment in time. She's a She's giant. A giant. Mm -hmm. The girl whose picture he captured one Juneteenth and whose gaze now captures a city. Oh, it just melts your heart. I see a celebration. And she's like, come on, come on, mama. To many here, it is a perfectly placed invitation. Allowing us to be reflective of what we've become. He's just fantastic. Guido! And it bends the lines drawn so long ago. I can always look back, now I'm gonna look forward. That's what I get out of it. I want people to see themselves in it. It is one thing to identify with the mural. But seem like I know her too. It is something else to be its identity. A lot of people have a lot of interpretations of what it means. Zoe King. People are just astounded that it's so realistic. A smart and humble 15 year old. That gaze that you get is so powerful because it's noticing you. Never saw Guido take that photo. I didn't even know that the painting was going on at all. Never knew she was being painted. I turn, I look, and I'm like, well, <laughs> there's, there's my face. <laughs> but she did know it was never about her. It's obviously more than me. It is what she represents. There's no lie in those images. This is McKinney. And this. This is what I felt. This is what I came across. Is her city. It's almost like a new beginning to this side of McKinney. It's always been home to me. Even 30, 40 years down the track after the paint fades. East side, west side. And any lines do too. I want people to feel it, read into it more, and feel something from it. In McKinney. This is home. This is home. I'm Jobin Punniker. I mean, I put our, our staff of writers and reporters up against any staff in the country, and I would bet on our staff every day of the week. Um, they're, they're amazing writers. We've got so many um, great writers, great reporters, great, great collaborators that um, without them, there's, I mean, there's no way I would, I would, I would win this. Who's keeping score? 
when so much hangs in the balance. I can show you something crazy you need to get on camera. Look on that bird feeder right there. This little town of Egan. I've seen the trees spinning in their front yard. Felt the big brunt of the EF2 tornado Monday. Thankfully, no one died. See that door right there? came off of that industrial screw conveyors over there. They're really sturdy doors. Two houses, the Zelanies, the Barneses. Glad we wasn't outside, is all I know. With barn doors turned daggers in the wind. I'm tired. I know, Mama. Brittany was in the RV nearby. Her father rushed out to get her. I literally made it like maybe four steps and something had hit me. There's a bunch of cinder blocks right there of where it was stabilized. The RV she was in rolled over them. And then Sean ended up right there. Slamming them to the ground. She's fine. He's not. Because he's got all of his ribs that are broken and his nose is broken and then they had to reconnect his ear. I feel like it's my fault because he was coming out to save me. Scores don't matter to this mother. The number alive in her family do. They're here. Everything else can be fixed. You got a pair of shorts up there too. Yeah, I know. These families will decide next steps once the gravity of this tornado hits them a different way. I'm sure it will in the next couple of days or every time you look out the front door. Or when Stephen Barnes realizes the key to that front door normally sits right here with the handle this way was carefully hidden under a grill inside their garage. And this is stuck to the bird feeder. Tell me how that happened. That's Mother Nature's power on full display. We're, we're up one on her this time because we're still here, so. They may have survived or. That's the way I look at it. Just been spared. Who's keeping score? Sadly, that's all of our time, but we thank you for yours. And just know that everyone here at WFAA, including the photographers, they look forward to giving you another year of powerful storytelling.